Joining us is Dr. Dwayne Elmore, Associate Professor of Natural Resource Ecology and Management. Well, Dwayne, thanks for joining us today. Glad to be here. I really want to find out more about woodpeckers. Um, they do quite a bit of damage to homes, mm -hmm. and there's kind of three areas, right, where That's they're, true. I guess, annoying us. <laughs> Absolutely. Tell us a bit about the first, which is actual damage to the house. Sure. Mm -hmm. So on this structure here, the woodpeckers were actually trying to create nesting cavities. And uh, woodpeckers nest in, uh, most woodpeckers nest in dead trees, mm -hmm. decaying wood. Um, and the ones that we typically get complaints here in Oklahoma, which are northern flicker and downy woodpecker, that's, that's true in both cases. So in the springtime, often they're looking for cavities. And if they don't find a suitable cavity, they'll excavate one. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's where they run into problems with homeowners. And it's really frustrating for homeowners because there's not a good, easy solution. Woodpeckers are protected, so you can't legally uh, kill them. Mm -hmm. So we're mostly trying to harass them or exclude them once they've created a cavity. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed here you've treated the excavation hole yeah. with uh, metal flashing, and that's one way to keep them out. Right. Um, you mentioned to me earlier when we were talking that uh, the timing was kind of important. You ended up with mm -hmm. more damage than what you would have Yeah, liked. in retrospect, mm -hmm. we would have been a lot better off to have uh, just let them complete their clutch before we sealed those holes up because uh, this particular pair, they were, that, uh, the, the male already had a mate, a mm -hmm. and they were paired, and they were pretty set on nesting here. So every time we fixed a cavity, they just excavated a new one. Um, now sometimes that's not the case. If you find a male that's not paired, or if they're not very far along, and you catch the problem early, then you might be able to um, seal that hole, and maybe they find another spot. Mm -hmm. But um, the problem, especially with a flicker, which is a powerful woodpecker, they can create this damage in a hurry. I mean. Uh, within a day. You can come home and wow. have a couple of holes excavated mm -hmm. in your house. And there's not a really good deterrent for this. I mean, if you have a wood-sided home, at some point you're probably gonna face this. Mm -hmm. And uh, really all you can do is kind of patch it afterwards because obviously we cannot wrap the entire house in something to keep the damage from happening. Now you mentioned they're looking for a nesting cavity. A lot of times that's in a tree, perhaps mm -hmm. a dead area in a tree. Um, there are nesting boxes yes. designed for the flicker as well, correct? Yeah, you can get a, mm -hmm. a woodpecker box, a big flicker box, and put it up in your yard, and that's not going to completely alleviate the problem, but it might in some years mm -hmm. be the place they choose to go. And so, you know, this is not going to be something that you're probably, as a homeowner, going to face every year, but mm -hmm. if you own a wood-sided home at some point, even with the flicker box, you're probably going to have some significant damage that you have to uh, repair or turn into the insurance company. So. <laughs> now another type of structural damage that um, both the northern flicker and the downy will do on the home is when they're looking for food. Correct, mm -hmm. and that can be year-round. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they forage on uh, uh, trees. Usually they're looking under bark for insects that are hiding. Mm -hmm. And uh, typically when they're foraging on your house, you'll hear it maybe just kind of a uh, uh, periodic uh, tapping and you'll hear them kind of creeping along the side of the home and they're searching for food in that case and that usually doesn't cause a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. um, they're usually looking for soft wood and if your house is solid you know they're probably not going to find that. So damage from foraging is a lot less than it would mm -hmm. be from for cavities. And we'd find that on wood siding but also on the soffits which will have wood Absolutely, as well or the eaves. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if you have uh, rot, rotten wood on your home in any of those places, mm -hmm. uh, you know that needs to be replaced regardless of woodpeckers but certainly if woodpeckers are an issue they're going mm -hmm. to really key in on those areas. You can also put out suet mm -hmm. um, which is a, f a fat and fruit seed mixture that you can buy, you know, it's commercially made. And that, uh, again, is not going to be 100% deterrent, but if you can cause them to have to forage less because you're providing a food source, you might reduce the amount of time they're spending on your house looking for insects. Excellent. Now, one of the things that I think a lot of people enjoy about woodpeckers are the sounds they make, the mm -hmm. tapping on trees, uh, but when it gets to be on your home, it might be a little bit irritating. I'm sure you get some calls about that. Yeah, especially in the spring. Mm -hmm. uh, woodpeckers, uh, one of the ways that they uh, attract a mate, instead of vocalizing, they actually create a loud drum, mm -hmm. and it's really loud. And uh, this is in the spring, and they typically do it at first light when people are still in bed, so it's very annoying 
especially if they're if they found a piece of metal or something on your house mm -hmm. that broadcast their uh, territorial drum loudly. So a lot of people complain about this and you can harass them to try to get them to move, but usually these animals are on a territory, so it's very difficult to get them to move. Mm -hmm. The good news is, is it's short-lived. Okay. It's only gonna be a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and it's also probably not gonna create damage because they're not trying to damage the home in that instance, they're just trying to be really loud. And a lot of times this will be on metal, sheet metal. Okay, and the tapping's not as powerful as real rap then. That's correct. Well, there's another woodpecker that this time of year is pretty active in the landscape, mm -hmm. and that's the sapsucker. Yes. Why don't we go take a look at some of their damage? Okay. Dwayne, this time of year we start to see the yellow-bellied sapsuckers coming back to Oklahoma, yeah. and I'm sure you get some calls about their damage to the trees. Yes, uh, they only winter here in Oklahoma, and they usually show up in October, mm -hmm. and they'll stay oh, you know, somewhere between late February and early April, and they'll usually leave. And um, the damage that they cause is, is um, on trees, and mostly soft wooded trees that produce a lot of resin. So fruit trees like this apple tree, mm -hmm. also pines and maple in particular. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what they'll do is create these really shallow uh, drill holes or cavities on the side of a tree and they'll create sometimes hundreds of these and they're just resin traps. Mm -hmm. And the tree will produce resin and then insects will get trapped and the woodpecker will actually come back and feed not only on the resin but also on the insects that are trapped. Now Duane, they characteristically create these rows of holes in the tree and for homeowners I think that's important because that that's different from insect damage, so they know yeah. that they have a woodpecker, not insect problem. Exactly, it's it's very patterned, mm -hmm. uh, and usually lower on the tree, on the on the bowl of the tree, or on the larger branches is where you'll see mm -hmm. that. Now, this really doesn't impact the overall health of the tree to a great extent. Not typically. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, anytime you enter, uh, create a wound on a tree, there's a potential for pathogen to enter. But um, generally, the trees that woodpeckers do this on that produce a lot of resin are, are kind of, they seal those wounds off quickly. The mm -hmm. tree has that defense. So normally, this is not going to result in um, any kind of major problems for the tree. So for homeowners, it's more of an aesthetic issue. If yeah. they really can't tolerate it, what can we do to try to uh, avoid it? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can put uh, some type of sticky uh, material that's that's commercially available that will uh, the woodpeckers don't like walking in that. Mm -hmm. Although that looks probably worse <laughs> than than the, the drill yeah. marks, perhaps. Yeah. So uh, you could also wrap it uh, in some type of burlap material or, or plastic bird netting, and that may uh, not look attractive either. So mm -hmm. there's not. Uh, anything easy to do that is going uh, to not also be maybe un unesthetic for someone. But you know, if you do, or if you are worried about losing that tree, wrapping it in bird netting during the winter months will mm -hmm. work. And then when spring comes, you can remove that because those woodpeckers will go back north. And this tree's branched low from the ground, but in many trees um, that are branched higher and have a main truck, trunk, the damage is on that lower portion. So you would just wrap up. Yep. So the first branch or so? Yeah, mm -hmm. and they will damage on up in the tree if it has large branches, but typically, you're right, that, mm -hmm. that those first few feet is where most of the, um, the damage is going to occur. So it really just comes down to, you know, if it really troubles you, if you don't want to look at it, then you might want to wrap it. But um, most of the time, you're probably going to be safe. It's probably not going to kill that tree. Well, Duane, we have quite a number of woodpecker species here in Oklahoma. We've looked at just a handful and mm -hmm. overall they're really a beneficial group, insect feeders and quite interesting and beautiful. So I know we've focused yeah. on the damage right. but we yeah. want to also remember that they're an important part of the natural community. Absolutely. You know most people get a lot of enjoyment for, for having them in their landscape mm -hmm. and it's just periodically that they'll cause damage and um, fortunately most of the time it's pretty superficial. All right. Well thanks for sharing with us. Thank you.